on sunny, snowy days. <laughs> George usually got up bright and early. But this day, he discovered that Bill had gotten up even brighter and earlier. out of snow, although the correct term is igloo. <laughs> yep. I'm trying to earn my sprout badge in winter camping. And to do that, I have to build an igloo and sleep in it overnight. Ooh. Suddenly, that was exactly what George wanted to do. Build an igloo and sleep in it, just like Bill. <laughs> you want to help me? <laughs> <laughs> and sleep in the igloo, too? Uh -huh. Why not? Let's get started. George. That's not the proper technique. Guess I better show you. Uh, city kids probably don't know much about non-mortar construction. <laughs> See, the first thing you do is mark a circle in the snow. That's your foundation. Then you take the biggest blocks and fit them together like this. Bill showed George how to build up the igloo walls block by block, making sure that the top layer overlapped the bottom. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep, and when we're all done, we can just smooth out the inside. As they built it up, the igloo started to look like a volleyball cut in half. See, we keep shaping these blocks and put them all the way around until there's just a small hole left in the center. <laughs> and we fill that with a large block called a keystone. You have to cram it in so it'll hold the walls in place. <laughs> now, I'll just make a few air holes. And once we fill all these cracks of snow, it'll stay pretty warm. Yep. We're done. Ah, ah! Let's go check it out. Ah, ah! Ooh, ooh. George was so excited. He had never been in an igloo before. The inside of the igloo was smaller than George thought. Ah. He had wanted a fun igloo. One that was big enough for a bed and a tuba and his friends. Sort of like his room, only better. Build your own igloo? Uh -huh. Sure, I wish I could help you, but I gotta fill up these cracks and then do my chores. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So George started on his second igloo of the day with help from the man with the yellow cap. But this time, he built it wider and taller and brought in some furniture. Wow, good window. <laughs> Are you sure you want to spend the night in here, George? <laughs> Okie doke, I guess it's time to make the cocoa. Okay. Hey, George, how's it? Whoa, this is huge. You put a bed in here? <laughs> and a sofa? Oh. <laughs> wow. The only thing is, it might get cold at night. The bigger the igloo, the colder it gets. <laughs> George wasn't worried. He figured he'd just wear his coat to bed. <laughs> when the man with the yellow hat told George he was bringing home a wondrous animal called a chameleon, George decided to surprise it with a gift. 
Hi, George. That's terrific. It looks just like Jade. Take a look. Yeah, Professor Wiseman and I rescued her when she lost her jungle home. She's, uh, there. See? Huh? Look, she's changing color. Chameleons can do that. See, she's usually green like her jungle surroundings, and that's why we named her Jade. But under the sun's rays, she got warmer, and that made her change color. Watch. Chameleons change color when the temperature changes. <laughs> and sometimes when their mood changes, too. Anyway, today Jade will get a new home at the zoo. That is, if I can convince Dr. Chroma that she's the kind of rare chameleon he's been looking for. Oh. Yep, I I've already prepared my speech. Now, I just need to pick up some posters. Hey, do you want to feed Jade while I'm gone? Uh -huh. Oh, great, her food's on the table. Uh, just drop in a few pieces and she'll do the rest. Thanks, George. Bye-bye. Jade had an amazing tongue. George wondered if he could get his tongue to work like that. <laughs> George had left the cage open. Jade was gone. No way for George to get to Jade. He'd have to find a way to get Jade to come to him. <laughs> Introducing Squeaky. What chameleon could resist? Nothing brought out the puppy and Hundley like a squeaky toy. The squeaks were coming from George's apartment. George hoped that Squeaky would lure Jade back to her cage. All he could do now was wait, quietly. It's just a little rain. I'll get you an umbrella. Let's check the attic. Aha! I knew I had an umbrella. <laughs> George thought the cart was wonderful. It would be perfect for carrying stuff. Huh. I really should get rid of some of this. <laughs> you want that? Oh, sure. <laughs> <gasps> My first yellow hat. Now that's a keeper.
George loved his new cart. Now all he needed was something to put in it. It was too small for a cow. It could hold a ton of coconuts, but there were no coconut trees around. That's what George could put in it. Interesting sticks. George got out of the woods, he had quite a collection. <laughs> huh? Hiya, George. Hey, you want to try some delicious made out of apples that I picked myself, apple cider? <laughs> ah. Do you want a whole bottle? <laughs> That'll be three fifty, please. Why don't you and Allie make a trade? That's what we used to do when we were kids. Uh -huh. Ta -da! Mm, I like it, but I don't want to trade for a stick. Oh. I like the cart, though. George wasn't sure he wanted to give up his new cart. But then again, that cider was delicious. Now, just remember, kids, once you make a trade, it's for keeps. <laughs> we know. Yay! And it squeaks, too. <laughs> Here you go, George. <laughs> By the next morning, George had finished all the cider <laughs> and was missing his cart. There were so many fun things he could be doing. <laughs> no! Like playing hide and seek or carrying a pet fish around. But the cart was gone. <gasps> Unless he could trade it back for something. <laughs> something Allie would like. <laughs> it was George's first spring day back in the country. And already, he was starring in a movie. Hiya, Mr. Rankins. Yeah. Hi, Bill. George? Okay, George. You go in first and see if there are any baby ducks running around. <laughs> <laughs> I'll follow with my camcorder. <laughs> this will make a great scene for my science project about baby animals. This is Bill bringing you Baby Ducks, live from the Rankin's Bar. Hey! We're in luck. The ducklings haven't hatched yet. They're still inside their eggs. Sure, George. Look. You and me and other mammals come into the world as babies. But birds, ducks for example, come as eggs. Oh. <laughs> yep, Dumpling's babies will hatch from these eggs, as long as she sits on them to keep them warm. <laughs> Sprouts on her, George. If she doesn't sit on them, they'll get cold and never hatch. Oh, my battery died. I'll have to get another one. Don't let the eggs hatch without me, okay? Uh -huh. <laughs> Where was Dumpling going? She was supposed to be keeping her eggs warm. <laughs> Ha 
Eggs were still warm, but if Dumpling didn't come back soon... <gasps> George decided that if Dumpling wasn't going to sit on her eggs, he'd have to do it. <laughs> Carefully. <sighs> well, sitting on a nest, hatching eggs, is actually pretty boring. Thanks for loaning me a battery, sir. No problem. I think that's great you're filming a duck hatching. No! <laughs> this I've got to get on tape. Bill here bringing you a first. A city kid sitting on a nest of duck eggs. George, why are you sitting on a nest of duck eggs? <laughs> it looks like he's trying to keep Dumpling's eggs warm. Wow! I don't believe it. A duck is hatching right before my very eyes, on camera. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Rankins, you don't want to miss this. Your ducks are hatching. We'll, we'll be, be right, right there. there. Boring. Super boring. Mega boring. Now for the paint. Sheesh, <laughs> that billboard is kind of high. George, how about you paint and I'll supervise from here, okay? Uh -huh. Don't forget the picture. Uh -huh. When George got close to the billboard, he could see things he couldn't see from far away. Like the fact that the billboard wasn't just one big sheet of paper, but six sheets glued together. George, are you done? Uh-huh. Uh, George? Huh. Did you paint the picture on the billboard the same size as this? Uh-huh, uh -huh. Oh, that explains it. You painted too small. I'll show you. You can't see small stuff from far away. So George resolved to paint big. He'd cover every last inch of that billboard. Oh, hi, George. How'd you do? Huh? It looks like you painted only part of the picture. Did you run out of room? George wondered how he could get a small picture onto a big billboard. Then, he noticed something. The fold marks on the picture were just like the rectangles on the billboard. Oh, I get 
get it. Match the rectangles here with the rectangles there. That'll work. Here, I'll make it easier. Six rectangles. Paint one at a time and you're good to go. This time, George was sure he'd get it right. What? George, come down here quick! <laughs> Look! You're painting the rectangles out of order. 